Parece que se te olvidó que el sabor cuando tus labios me besaban con pasión. Esas promesas que no van a realizar como yo quisiera olvidar. Dime, pero ya no mientas. ¿Cómo fue que otra mujer pudo convencerte? Éramos un tesoro tú y yo, pero mi diamante se apaga. Dice que el amor es como un espejo. Cuando lo rompes en mil pedazos ya no hay remedio. Parece que se te olvidó aquel sabor. Cuando tus labios me besaban con pasión, esas promesas que no van a realizar, como yo quisiera olvidar. Dime, pero ya no mientas. ¿Cómo fue que otra mujer pudo convencerte? Éramos un tesoro. Parece que se te olvidó aquel sabor cuando tus labios me besaban con pasión. Esas promesas que no van a realizar como yo quisiera olvidar. Dime, pero ya no mientas. ¿Cómo fue que otra mujer pudo convencerte? Éramos un tesoro tú y yo, pero mi diamante se apagó. Ta 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 That was really, really good. Thank you. Is that song from the new album? Yeah, that's uh, one of my songs. It's a cumbia, and, uh, or it's the only cumbia on the album, yeah. but yeah. That was really good. So, Thank you. I want to get started. Is I was reading an article on the Imperial Valley Press, and it talked about how you caught the attention of Ty Dolla Sign, Baby Bash, and Immortal Technique. <laughs> how did that oh, happen, yeah. and how did that make you feel? <laughs> Okay, so um, the Ty Dolla Sign thing, to be completely honest with you, I have no idea. I have no idea yeah. how he found me, how he came across me, anything. He just, out of nowhere, he um, followed me, he liked my videos, he commented on one of my videos, and I was like, what? I was like, there's no way, like, that's yeah. crazy. And um, when, when that happened, I got, of course, I got, like, I was, like, starstruck, I got super excited, and I was just, because it was, you know, being from a small town, and, like, hardly anyone yeah. out there, you know, like, you know, it's hard to make it out there. So, like, whenever that happened, I, I swore, like, oh, my God, like, something's going to happen, you know? But um, I mean, he eventually unfollowed me <laughs> as time went by. But it was still a yeah. super cool thing, you know? Like, so cool that he yeah. even took time to, like, look at my stuff and, like, listen to everything. And it was crazy. And I, d I did DM him, like, one time, but that mm -hmm. was it. And, um, and then the Baby Bash thing happened. Um, I had joined his Talent Tuesday and um everyone that kind of like that went on there was kind of like just like messing around they weren't really being serious when they would join so when i joined i performed my first uh, original song that i had wrote and everybody loved it like they went crazy and i was like oh my god <laughs> and so he had wanted to record with me you know take take me to the studio and everything um and we we ended up not going through with that just because my, my dad is my, like my manager so he um you know he makes all the calls and everything and he just said that he didn't feel like it was time to do that yet like I wasn't ready for that responsibility and so we just ended up never going and um but yeah I think him and my dad stayed in contact so that's how how that happened when I yeah. joined his talent Tuesday and then for Immortal Technique um that was actually my dad because he had sent Immortal Technique my song 
and he just asked like for an honest opinion on it and whatever and a moral technique had said something like that music is subjective and that he's not the one to be the judge of it um but that like he liked my lyrics and stuff like that it was super cool because you know i grew up listening to moral techniques oh, yeah. so i was like dang yeah that's dope um but now that you've been working with mc magic you got a new album coming out um do you feel maybe ready to get a feature from baby bash um to be honest with you i don't know like i like baby bash but i don't know how me and him would sound together do you know what i mean like yeah, yeah. Different but style. i i mean there could be potential like, we could possibly have a banger like i don't know i mean i don't know you know sometimes like things happen so unexpectedly but oh, yeah. um like i never thought i could have like a collab with mc magic and like you know now we have two songs together so it's crazy yeah, that's dope um so how long have you been writing music um, so I, <laughs> I started writing when I was like seven, but it was bad. It was, obviously, yeah, yeah. I was seven years old. It was, it was terrible, but like, I swore that I was like the best, you know? Um, cause I used to want to be like Eminem, but yeah. I, I started writing at like seven years old. And, um, uh, of course it wasn't serious. I started taking it seriously when, around like when I was like 14 years old, 14, 15 years old is when I started writing my own like full blown songs. Yeah. Um, I would compose the music for them. I would write all the lyrics, everything. So, yeah, about 14, 15 years old. 14, 15, wow. Um, when you started writing, was it as a way to express yourself or did you say to yourself, I want to be a singer? Definitely a way of expressing myself because I would say, like, um, in high school, I was never, like, super popular. I didn't really have a lot of, I didn't really have friends in high school. Yeah. And so I was, like, kind of, like, a, I was, like, a loner. And um, it, it really, because of that, I took a liking to, like, knowledge and stuff like that i would learn about all these crazy different types of things that people yeah. might did not care about and they still don't care about so it, it was an isolating feeling and so i felt like my only like real friend my only escape was through music because people my age didn't understand me or they didn't care to understand me yeah, yeah i know what you mean yeah i used to be a learner too in school you know back in high school i know <laughs> that exactly how that feels um yeah. on your song dear self you said on the description about how you sometimes love yourself and sometimes you there's days where you hopelessly drown yourself in self-hatred is that something you still struggle with today um to be honest with you not i feel like i'm i'm even if i wanted not wanted to but like even if i um could like i feel like i've been so busy lately i don't have time to think about like myself in, yeah. in that in that manner anymore but but before um i feel i really do feel like i had too much time to think and of course it made me the person who I am today, but I just feel I had way too much time to think and, and it led to me stressing a lot of things that, you know, in the end they really don't matter. But um, because I would say I used to struggle really, really, really bad with uh, with body dysmorphia yeah. and it was bad. It was terrible. Every All night I would cry for hours and hours and, hours. and it's, it's all mental. It's not even yeah, real. Yeah. But I didn't know that at the time, you know, so like, and you you live and you learn and like that's that's what I wrote to yourself because some days I couldn't even stand to look at myself in the mirror I couldn't even stand it I could not stand it and it was like and like when people would tell me stuff I feel like they were lying to me like I didn't know what I looked like it was just crazy and so that's really really why I wrote to yourself and also because um sometimes I hated my own mind like not it wasn't just physical it was like mental too like sometimes I hated my own mind and I was like I wish that this is not the mind that I was given and I always wish that I was like a different person and so that's why I wrote to yourself because sometimes I'm like like, wow, like, sometimes I really, I love myself, and I'm like, there's no one else, there's no other me, you know what I mean? But then yeah. other times I'm like, like, why couldn't I be anybody but me, you know? Yeah, um, yeah. But that was from when I was, like, around 16, 17, yeah. and um, I grew I grew past that, which I'm happy, because I, that's not a good place to be in. Yeah. But, um, but really yeah, good. so I, I definitely grew from that. Um, so you did a cover to Triple X Tentacion song King, <laughs> and I noticed you were playing guitar. Like, how how long have you been playing guitar, and are you self-taught? Um, so I started playing guitar when I was seven years old because my Theo, who I love so much, <laughs> my Theo taught me how to play the guitar. But then I kind of like you know gave it up because I was young, and I started back again when I was fourteen. Like that's when I got back into music all crazy when I was yeah. fourteen years old. And um, at first I was trying to learn by myself, but my dad noticed that I was like kind of like struggling. Um, and so I started taking guitar lessons, um, shout out to Poli. <laughs> and um, you know, he, he was teaching me and he taught me like a lot of the basics, you know, like um, how to shred, all that type of stuff. Yeah. And so 
Um, so yeah, and to be honest with you, I was not super consistent with it, so I'm still not the best guitar player, yeah, but yeah. Um, I could still write songs and stuff like that, but I'm not like crazy good or anything. Yeah, yeah. You know, I got a guitar, I think an electric guitar, a Fender, uh, like about two years ago, and I tried playing it, and I just, I could not get the hang of it. But I mean, seeing you in that video, you know, you're pretty good. Pretty good. It's, it's, yeah, it's hard. You have to completely fall in love with your guitar. Like, yeah. the, like it, you have to love it or else you're not going to, you know, you're not going to. Yeah. It's, it's hard, yeah. too. But I feel guilty because my dad bought me that guitar for Christmas. And it's a Diamond series from, like, Sinister Gates or something. Okay. I love Sinister Gates. But I feel like I do not deserve that guitar. <laughs> I don't deserve it at all. So, um, so you still don't yeah. play the guitar, you know? <laughs> Um, but right now, I can't because I have nails. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. I can't wait to get them off, though, because I do want to play. Like, I, I love playing my guitar. It's therapeutic. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, do you play other instruments or just guitar? Um, I play a little bit of the keyboard, piano. Um, I took lessons for a while, but, of course, mm-hmm. that's also something I didn't stay super consistent with. So I know, like, the basics. Like, I yeah. can still write songs, but, of course, I can't, like, go all crazy, you know, like. Yeah. Um, so, so, yeah. <laughs> So, you I know you have a musical talent. You're good at singing. You're good at writing. You're good at playing some instruments. Does this talent that you have does it run in your family? Um, actually, well, this my tata, <laughs> my tata, my tios, and they used to have a band, like a family yeah. band. You know, my tata was a drummer. Um, my tío he plays the guitar. My other tío sings. Um, my other tío plays the bass. And then on that's that's on my mom's side of the family, my dad's side of the family. Um, my I have a few cousins that they sing kind of like um, kind of opera style singing. Yeah. So I guess you could say, you know, <laughs> I guess you could say, yeah, kind of like it, it kind of runs in family a little yeah. bit. Um. So what artists or musicians have inspired you, and why? Oh Jesus, this is my favorite question. Um. <laughs> Definitely, definitely on the top of my list is XXX Tentacion. He is, I, and you know what, I never felt, um, well obviously his music is like out of this world. I love X, he's so versatile, everything. But it was mostly what, him as a person what is what drew me to him because his his energy and his way of being, his, his mindset was so evolutionary. Like he was up there, he so misunderstood. I, I still feel to this day he's so misunderstood. And, um, I just, you know, whenever X died, that's when I wrote my first song because that's how much I loved him. Yeah. That I felt like like he was the only artist that was real. Like, or maybe there's more, but like that I really loved, you know, that was real. And I was like, he was yeah. going to do something. He had like the biggest influence on today's generation, everything. And he was going to do something big. And, you know, the moment that that was about to happen, he passed away. And so I figured like, like, this is not fair. Like, this is crazy. And I was like, someone is going to continue his legacy. And it's gonna be me. And I know that sounds crazy, but like one of X's biggest things was versatility. It was like that he wanted to bring versatility into the game, and that you can, you don't have to put yourself in a box. You don't have to stay yeah. in one place forever. And I used to try to do that to myself, and I finally broke out of that because of him. He made me realize, and that's why my album is like all over the place, all over. It's crazy. Like there's you know, like I said, like there's cumbias, there's a mariachi, there's pop, there's um like sad a sad piano song. There's like a freaking reggaeton song like that's what I'm saying it's like it's all over the place and um I feel like that's what the music industry needs right now is versatility because everyone is so trying to keep themselves in a box like if you look like this you listen to that if you act like and I hate that like I'm just gonna break it like you're people are people good music is good music and that's it there's nothing else to it so he's definitely a big influence musically and just in my life um my way of thinking and being and stuff like that and um I would say my my other biggest influence is definitely Eminem. I love that man so much. <laughs> yeah. I love that man. Um, I can't wait to the day that I meet him. But I've been a fan since I was seven years old of Eminem, and um, I just love him so 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 much. I love the fact that he doesn't care about anything because he knows he himself knows that he's real and he knows what he's been through. Doesn't gotta explain himself to anybody. Yeah. And I feel like that's so admirable because a lot of people care too much what people think and they want to act a certain way to portray a certain image. I'm, I would never do that. And that's what I take from Eminem is like, I'm always going to be myself. And it's like, people are going to love me. People are going to hate me. And I always say that's the yin and yang of life. I don't care. <laughs> so he's definitely, definitely, definitely one of my biggest influences. Eminem and X, hardcore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're pretty, really good artist. Um how this is what i want to know how did you get in contact with mc magic oh okay i know i like this question too um, so it's funny
funny because I said I had gotten to my during quarantine I got into this phase where I was like just re-listening to old MC Magic songs you know just like out of nowhere I just felt like it and I, and I was like oh my god like his music is so good like this is like because his sound is so specific and it's not mainstream and because a lot of Mexican artists like and I hate that they don't go mainstream yeah. you know what I mean and they're so good and so I was like, this sound, like, I need to make a song like this. Like, I need to make a song like this. So me and my dad, we wrote um, my first Spanish song ever um, called Mi Amor. And so my dad was like, what if we, like, hit up his manager to see if we can, you know, get a feature or whatever. So we emailed them that night, right? And um, no response. Next day comes. Um, and then he, I saw that he was live. And he was going live with his fans. And I was like, ooh, like, I'm going to request to go live with him. And um, I would say I was laying down. I looked at all. I looked all busted that day. I was even expecting to get picked. And boom, I see my screen loading. And I jumped up from my bed. I was like, Oh my god! Like I'm literally live with MC Magic, you know. And so when I got on, I was like all hardcore, like going crazy. And the first thing that I told, him, I was just like, Can I sing for you? Like, Can I sing for you? That's it. I wanted to get all the BS out of the way. And so he was like, Yeah. So I sang um, sing things for him. And he liked it, and I sang an original song for him, which was Mi Amor, the one that me and my dad had wrote. Literally my first Spanish song ever. And it was MC Magic, like, style, you know, like, that sound that he has. And, um, and so I sang it to him, and he loved it. And so that's when he was like, do you want to be on my next album? And I was like, I literally told him that he was lying. I was like, you're lying. Like, you're lying. And I started, yeah. like, going crazy. I was like, all like that, you know? And um, and he's like, no, I'm not lying. So then he got in contact with my dad. We set up, uh, you know, uh time and place to meet and he um came to my house and when he met me really it's when he really met me and like got to know me that he um well he says that he fell in love with me like with my energy and, and stuff like that and so that's when he said that he saw that i had the potential to not just be a feature on his album but a star like or he says that i'm already a star and so he said that he just wants to bring that out for the world to see and so that's when he offered to help me with my first album Nice. So that's how that came up. <laughs> yeah, you know, I felt the exact same way when I listened to your song "Wasting My Time," dear self. <laughs> I was like, "Wow, you know, a unique voice, a unique style and sound." And I was like, "It's something fresh, you know." And that's yeah. exactly the way I, th I thought about when I first heard your music. Um, <laughs> so, how did your parents feel about getting si you? How did your parents feel about you getting signed to Nasty Boy Records? It's crazy because before when before any of this happened, we would always be talking about like um, how we were, we were always going to stay independent forever because we know how dirty the music industry is, especially yeah. being a young female in the music industry. We know how dirty it is. And so we were like, my dad always wanted to stay um, uh, what, what, independent. Yeah. And because he's like my manager, like I said. And so it was whenever MC Magic offered that to us, it was kind of like, like, should we go through this? Like, it was kind of scary. But, you know, MC Magic has become more than just, like, just a business mind. He, he's family now. Like, yeah. straight up. He's one of the coolest people that I have ever met in my 18 years of living. <laughs> he's so cool. Like, he's like, I, I always say he's my best friend. Even though our age gap is, like, insane, yeah. he's my best friend. Like, he's true. He's so cool. And um, so it's, it was more than just, like, you know, someone that just wanted to take advantage of us for a money opportunity. It's like, this is, yeah. like... Like, I got you and you got me, like that. Yeah. And so, um, so yeah, at first, I guess it was like the idea of getting signed, with, we were pretty hesitant. But then, like, you know, after he showed us, like, you know, his um, his true character, it was it was easy to say yes. And, and we went through with it. And they were, my parents were obviously super happy. They're like, oh, my God, like, you got signed so young. Like, that's crazy. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. What did uh, your friends think about that? My friends? Yeah. Um, I don't really have a lot of friends, but... Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> uh, I talked to, like, two, maybe two people consistently. Um, like When they found out about it, they were super proud of me. It was mostly my family. That's where all the yeah. love was coming from, was from my family. Um, and, of course, you know, I have people from my school that try to act like they were my friends, and just yeah. because of everything... It is, it's scandalous. Like, I can see through it, but... <laughs> but, yeah. um, but, yeah, so, like... Yeah, everyone though, everyone was proud of me. It was nothing, nothing but love from everybody, and um, it's just cool to finally see like everything that I ever dreamed of. It's like every day I wake up, that's my reality now. It's not, it's no longer a dream. It's just making it happen. Uh, I get a step closer every single day. That's good. That's good. Um, so, the next question is: Who has been your greatest support throughout your journey as an artist? Um. 
like two people, yeah. which is gonna be well three, <laughs> which is both my parents yeah. because they are my biggest fans. And you and being wanting to do something like this, like being an artist, is so hard to get support from your parents because you know, like a lot of parents are like scared. They've always been there from the beginning of time, from my first performance ever on my talent show to now. They have always been my biggest fans, and um, also my tata, who he passed away um, on the 4th of July, 2020, and, and that's why I'm, I'm dedicating my album to him. Um, it's his birthday present. It's come, it comes out on his birthday, February 19th of this month, so I'm so excited, and um, he was my biggest fan. My mom always tells me, of course, I don't remember I was small, but she said when I was like three or four, my tata would say that I was going to grow up and be a singer. Yeah. And they said he they don't know how in the hell he knew that yeah. <laughs> that he just said that he just felt it and I was like what like that's crazy and um, so he called it you know and that's so I don't know and like so now I just want to do everything for him you know whatever happens if there's an afterlife if there's not whatever yeah. I'm I'm doing it for him and um, and you know I hope if his energy is anywhere that he's proud because he was truly my biggest fan yeah. You know, it's crazy how sometimes, you know, it's just destiny, you know, for him to know yeah. that you were going to be something, you know? It's, <laughs> yeah, it's, crazy. it's crazy. It just it happens. It's, everything happens for a reason, you know? I always say that. I live by that. I live yeah. by everything happens for a reason. Everything, Because, I mean, without that happening, I mean, like, um, on one of, one of my songs in the album is, uh, I have a feature with Little Rob. It's an oldie. And I only did that because of my tata passing away. If my tata never passed away, I don't even think I would have considered doing an oldie. Mm -hmm. um, only because I, I never felt that I could sing in that style. But after my tata passed away, I just wanted to dedicate something to him because he was always the same to oldies all the time. And um, and so I I wanted to write an oldie for him. And, you know, it blossomed into something more. I got, we got the features Little Rob. We have a music video now. It's, it's, it's dropping on the day of the album. It's going to be so fire. And, um, you know, we use my tata's lowrider in the car. It's just, it's all for him, you know? Yeah. Everything is for him. And so, um, so that's what I'm saying. Like how you said, everything happens for a reason. Like that song literally wouldn't exist if yeah. that didn't happen. My album release date, which we were contemplating for months, like, when are we going to release it? When are we? It, it, it jumped from, it was going to release in October because that's my birthday month. Then it was going to release in November, then December, then January. And it finally we chose February 19th because of my tata. Yeah. Um, and, you know, just put so much more meaning behind it than if it were to just, you know, like kind of whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, and so, yeah, so so everything does happen for a reason. But those, they're definitely my my biggest, biggest fans. And um, my sister, too, I wouldn't say a fan. Because yeah. <laughs> we fight a lot, but she's a supporter, <laughs> hardcore. My sister believes really in me hardcore, too. Like, yeah, yeah she's my sister's my best friend, too. But, um, but yeah, so that's all of them. <laughs> Three fans. Yeah, and now MC Magic too. MC he's always Magic. telling me, yeah, like, yeah, that's he's, like, he's like, Jay, I'm your number one fan. Jay, I'm your number one fan. <laughs> oh, yeah. So yeah, so all of those people, I love all of them. <laughs> all right. um, so how long does it take you to write a song? Um, well, you know, it honestly, it just depends. Some songs, yeah. they take forever to write. You're like, you can't get it, and it's insane. And then some songs, they on the spot. Spot like that like you're just like banger instant banger yeah. and those are the good days those are the super good days but some days you just have writer's block and it just sucks and you can't force creativity because it's it just comes so naturally um and you know uh a lot of the songs that we wrote on the album took about like i want to say an hour an hour or two to write like to compose the entire thing wow. um yeah um of course though we, we had to record from in different days because recording is the, another process but the writing itself we usually got it done like in in the same day, same day. Nice. So, a lot of good progress, huh? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what was the inspiration behind your song "Wasting My Time"? Oh my God, <laughs> it's so funny that you bring that up because I I actually do not like that song, but a lot of people like that song, and I yeah. do not like it. <laughs> only because it's my first song, and I feel I can do so much better now. Yeah. So like, when people are like, "Oh my God, I like wasting my time," I'm like. <laughs> but yeah, wasting my time is um. There's a lot of inspiration that did go behind that. That's okay. So like, in high school, you know, I was uh like I said, I was um. People always tell me that I have an old soul because I always realize things that people my age don't. I even realize things that some people that are older than me don't. And like, um, 
I, my main focus was the school system. I always hated school. I did not like being there. I did not like being around all the people. I didn't like school. I didn't like what they were teaching me, nothing. And so I just thought the school system was so corrupt, you know? Yeah. Um, and I was, I, I swore I was going to change the school system <laughs> with that song. But, um, but yeah, so I really just did not like the school system. It was just my honest feelings in that song. Like, seriously, I just, like, I was playing with my piano, and I was like, this song's good. Like, the dun, dun. That little, you know, hmm. and I was like, this one's kind of good. And then I just started like pouring my heart out about school, and I was like, hold on, like this is actually all right. Like, so I started writing down the lyrics, and and um and yeah, and I would say at that time, my inspirations were definitely um, Hobson and um, Hobson Big Time, and um, also X, and and yeah, so like. <laughs> So, uh, so yeah, I was just, you know, against the school system. So I still don't like it, but I guess it's not a huge concern anymore because I'm not even in school. Um, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> those are some magic dogs. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so like, I guess it's not such a huge, I mean, it felt like a huge part of my life because I was there for four years, every single day. I hated every single time I had to go and I hated what, like, you know, like in history, how they was just kind of like, they just whitewash all our history. Yeah. They don't, they teach about the same stuff over and over and over. They don't teach you about your own history. And when they do, it's like, a, the truth. and, um, you know, I just, and like, like math, like the extreme math is like so useless. Like all that stuff is just, to me, it's so dumb. It's like that stuff, like if you're going to go in a specific career, that's for you. But I don't see why there wouldn't be way more important things to teach about in school. But of course, I know that's how the government wants it to be. So, yeah. but yeah, um, they don't want to, they don't want to have individual thinkers, but you know, like that's, that's how it is. And that, that was my inspiration for wasting my time. Um, so yeah, I just really, really hated the school system and, and all that. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's crazy how you say it's one of your least favorite songs that you've done. And, but honestly, when I listened to that song, I don't know how many times I listened to it over and over and over. It was actually pretty good. I loved it. And Thank it's crazy you. because... <laughs> I'm not even in high school, you know, and I'm listening to it. Uh -huh. but, I mean, the message yeah. is really powerful, you know. That's what I like yeah, about I that mean, song. Oh, when we first released that, um, we entered this competition for World Star, like to get on their website or their page or whatever. And I won, but for the website, um, the website award. Yeah. And I remember I was just getting roasted on there. <laughs> Everyone was just saying like how I suck, my but everything. And so that kind of at that time, my confidence was very low. So when I read those things, I, I, I went down with it. Now I don't care anymore. I don't care about any of those comments anymore. Cause I mean, I literally have MC Magic by my side. It's like you know, why would I care about that? But at that time, it really brought me down, and so I guess I kind of just grew to dislike that song also because of that, um, and just because I feel like I could do so much better. I could probably re-record that song, change up some of the lyrics so it's a little bit like kind of like less corny, and I could do like way a million times better, a million times. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> but um, I mean, yeah, it's not objectively speaking, it's not a terrible song. It's just not my personal favorite. Yeah. Because as an artist, you know, like as an artist, you just grow. You constantly are growing. So like your first few pieces it's kind of like uh like it's it's hard to really like them yourself you know yeah yeah so. <laughs> um so how did you feel about recording with mc magic for the first time and were you nervous super nervous i was insanely nervous oh my god he went to my house i was like oh my god like he's so annoyed at me because i don't sing right i'm not doing this right. like because mc magic really t he put me he pushed me you know to do um, I want to say push me to my limits. He like pushed me over my limits and like he made me do things that I've never tried before and stuff like with my voice. And I was like, oh my god, like how like does he expect me to do this? And you'll hear when the album drops in our in our song together, Mi Amor. My vocals are insane on that track, and I still can't even believe that I did that. But because he pushed me in that day when we were recording, like I felt like I felt like he was annoyed, but I don't know. It was my first time meeting him, so I was like, "Oh my god!" And I kept saying, "Sorry, sorry, sorry," because like, we had to do so many takes like over and over and over again. He's like, "No, don't worry. He's like, that's how recording works and stuff." But um, it was cool. Um, you know, like he was literally just in my living room. Like that's how where we recorded like ninety percent of the album, just in my living room, and um. And yeah, I mean, it was cool. I was super nervous, um, and and now it's cool because we're like best friends. And, yeah, and it's just fun now. <laughs> That's dope. <laughs> um, <laughs> what aspects of the music making process excites you the most, and what aspect discourages you the most? Um, the 
honest with you, that excites me the most is definitely the storytelling part of music because I will never make meaningless music, no matter、yeah. how meaningless my songs sound. I will never ever make meaningless music. All my songs they have a story to them, all of them, whether they're real or made up, they all have a story.、Yeah. And、um, and so that's I guess that's my favorite part because when I do the storytelling, I imagine the music video and I imagine the sets and the, and the outfits and everything. So yeah, I would say the storytelling and the、um, the music videos are my favorite part. And、um, and then my least favorite part is probably recording. Only because it takes so long. Because <laughs> you have to do take after take after take after take. You know, a two-minute song is like a song that took like a whole day to record, and、um, you have to get everything perfect. You know, all the layering, every single thing has to be crisp,、yeah. perfect. So I guess you could say like the recording process is like my least favorite part.、Um, just because it takes forever. <laughs> But yeah. yeah, it's still fun. All of it, all together, is it's fun. It's fun because then when you get the final product, it's like everything is worth it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, have you performed in front of a crowd yet? Um, I have performed before. Um, just not none, none of my newer stuff because we wrote the album during the pandemic,、yeah. and you know I live in California, so the laws are still like super strict over there.、Yeah. Um, but um, <clears throat> but yeah, um, I've performed before, so I wouldn't say that I have like any stage fright, none of that. Um. And I'm I'm just excited to perform my newer stuff because now I'm、yeah. I'm like you know like I'm eager to just do it already like I just want to perform live I just want to like dance and see everything I don't want to go crazy yeah because、um, before my I mean you heard my older songs、yeah. they're like a little bit more calm they're a little bit stagnant so like when I'm performing it just kind of be me standing there like you know the,、uh, <laughs> like just stuff、yeah. like that so there's no movement but now I have like like I said I have cumbias I have reggaeton so I was like I just want to like do it already and yeah, I feel yeah, like yeah. I've been so like trapped this whole time I、like, can't wait. Nice.、Um, what do you see yourself in five years as an artist? Oh my God, that's crazy! I was just talking to my dad about this yesterday at、yeah. the restaurant. <laughs> that's another one of my questions that I get a lot, and I always I, I told my dad I always feel like people expect me to kind of say like, oh, to have this many awards, to have be at this level of fame or money, whatever it is. Being an artist to me. It's the least superficial thing in the world. So that's those types of things are the last thing that I'm thinking about. What I want, where I see myself in five years, I hope that I'm a well-known and well-respected artist. I don't want people to like me because of my money, because of my clothes. I don't want them to like me because of no, nothing other than the fact that I'm an artist. Because、um, we were talking about how in the music industry, it, when you're a girl in the music industry, it's like it's kind of easy because all you have to do is be pretty and have a good voice,、um, and you can easily make it. And we were saying like how men in the music world that they're like more competitive. They have to be competitive because you don't make it off of looks. If you're a guy, you don't, because it's just that's not how the world is. You know what I mean?、Yeah. And so like he was saying that guys are more competitive, and and that's why they have a lot of diverse music styles. Um, because I I listen to way more male artists than I do female. Art. I listen to like like ninety nine percent of my playlist is male artists, and I was saying because like they just do stuff that's so different. Like you know like S P M. Like he has that. That like graveyard, like dark piano, like that. That's like stuff that I like. You don't hear is mainstream. It's so good. And and I was telling my dad that I feel like I have that mentality too. That it's like not a competition, but like I have to bring something new. I have to bring something new. I don't、yeah. want people to like me because I'm pretty. I don't want people to like me because I just have a good voice. There's a million people in this world that have good voices. I want people to just respect me for being an artist. Like that's all I want. That's all I want. That's all I want. That's where I see myself. I really don't care for awards.、Um, I'd be nice to get them, but I'm saying it's not like my goal. Like that's not my goal. My goal is just to connect with people and have them understand that from human to human, I get you. And I want to just bring people together with my music. That's like my only goal,、um, and to bring something new to the industry because I just feel like people are so washed out. It's repetitive. It's repetitive, repetitive, repetitive,、yeah. and it's like it's annoying because、um, there's no real artists anymore. And so, so yeah. So me and my dad were literally talking about this yesterday, and I was just saying like how in the in the music industry, if you're a girl, you're either just glamorized because your looks and your voice, like you know, just the border, or you're they sexualize you. And I hate both. I hate, hate that so much. I want to be seen like. Like the way, like the way that X's fans like respected him as an artist. They never cared what he wore. Like, and I think that's how. That's my goal is to hopefully one day have that connection with people.、Um, because, like I said, being an artist to me is like the least superficial thing in the world. And so the the last thing that I'm gonna care about when when it comes to like my reputation, all that, whatever, is like money, fame, none of that. Because, you know, that's not even what it's about. Yeah.
And I'm sorry, I talk a lot. I talk, no, no, it's, I talk it's all right. Yeah, it's, it's good. <laughs> um, so, who do you want to work with in the future? Eminem, no doubt. Eminem, hmm. definitely, because my other favorite artists are dead. So, I mean, I mean, I yeah. can't really work with them. Um, and my dream collab would would be to with X or Little Pete, but I mean, they both passed away. So, Eminem, you know, I hope one day I become at least at least big enough so he knows who I am. Um, so that we couldn't get a song together because he, I saw that he did a song with Jesse Reyes and so I know that he's capable of working with newer female artists so I want to collab with him one day because I love him so much <laughs> and I want to bring the Slim Shady out of him like that's, I love his Slim Shady era I'm gonna, I want to bring that out of him like we could make something like that you know because that's what his fans love and that's what they want and I want to bring really bring that out and so I just think we could do something so good we could do something so good so he's my dream collab right now yeah, that would, be, that would be awesome. I would love Imagine to hear that crazy. collab. <laughs> yeah. One day. One day, yeah. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. Um, what advice would you give to someone your age who wants to be a singer? Um, you know, it's hard because uh, a lot of people don't realize it when they're so young. Um, but I would say, like, I mean, and this is like the most vague kind of, I feel like it's kind of vague, but it's like people who know, they'll know. And yeah. it's like, you just have to be true to yourself. You just, I, people told me that for years and I was like, who am I? Like, I don't even know. Like, and, um, and so I was just like, all I could say is just be true to yourself. Like you have to be true to yourself. That's the only way that people are going to like you. That's the only way you just, and I always say real, recognize real. And that's the only way they're going to like you. Um, that's what I've been doing. I've just been a hundred percent myself. I used to try to be someone else. Like even I, even I told you, like in the Dear Self song, like I always wanted to not be myself, and I stopped that. I just kind of started being myself, and now I have like I've created a mini fan base already, and they love everything. They love about me is the stuff that I used to hate about myself, and that's just because it was just me. And so, because being a musician is more than, or being an artist is more than just, okay, make a banger, you're done. Yeah. You really have to have a character for people to love you. Like, you know, people love him so magic because he's humble, he's funny. He's, it's not just because like, oh, he made one song and he's whatever, whatever, that's it. No, it's like being an artist is so much more than that. Because like, as far as musical capabilities and all that goes, I can't really give advice because everyone's different. And also because music is subjective. So I can't be like, oh, do this, do that, do this. Yeah. Um, I can't say be consistent with your instruments. <laughs> yeah. Definitely do that because I didn't do that. Be consistent with your, with your, you know, skills and everything. Yeah. But like, as far as being an artist, artist, it's like, you got to stay true to yourself because the people that are always remembered, the people that are always loved on a mass scale or people who are just themselves like that's it um i also wanted to mention too um so that when, when people see this i don't want to, anyone to think that i was saying that female artists suck because i don't think that there's so many good female artists like you know like i love amy winehouse um there's so many good ones i'm just saying how how the industry works for specifically for females in the music industry like how they try to use them like they try to use them specifically for their looks or specifically to sexualize them um not that women don't have talent themselves there's so many so many so many talented women so many um but i just wanted to mention how it's different for the the genders and and you know the the way to go because i don't want people to think i was like being rude or nothing yeah. um i was just saying how it is you know um if you can describe your fans in one word, what would it be and why? Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Um, I love them. I, just, I don't even like to call them fans sometimes because I'm like, who am I to be like, oh, people are fans of me. You know what I mean? Like, I like to see them as my friends, like the friends that I never had, you know, because... Um, like the friends that I never had in elementary, middle school, high school, like they, they're all, they're my family kind of. And, and I just love them because they, they just give me this never ending support for like, I'm telling you just for living, just for being myself. Like they love that. And it's like crazy to me how I could just, you know, just be me and people like will give you respect and love for that. And so I would say they're perfect. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Last but not least, what are some things you have learned working with MC Magic? Oh, wow, I learned so much. Okay, well, I guess one of the biggest themes, I guess, is just um, 
being humble like literally you can send people i know people say that all the time like oh i'm humble it's easy to say but like are you actually doing it and i used to say that i was humble but i really wasn't and it wasn't until after meeting mc magic and seeing the way that he was and like his just his way of living and all that and it really taught me how to truly truly be humble like for real for real for real not just say it but to actually do it and also that hard work is the only way hard work is the only way like my generation of, of people maybe not yours but my generation mm. definitely lazy i'm gonna say it You're lazy everyone is lazy even i was and that's why i'm saying it because i used to be so lazy like oh, oh don't even get me started this generation is so lazy they want everything handed to them they don't want to work hard for nothing they want to blame everybody for their problems uh-uh that's not the way it works the only way is hard work the only way and mc had to tell me that um MC Magic, you know, like he told me like he used to hustle like at the at the swap meets and stuff like that. He'd be selling his CDs, doing all this, this and that. And you would never think someone as well known and as respected as MC Magic started from somewhere so where someone would stay so low, you know what I mean? Yeah. And um, it's respectable. It's respectable. People just like to make excuses nowadays. I used to make excuses, you know, like like when my mind state was in a very, very dark and bad place, I would blame everything on everybody else, everything around me except for my own self. And your life is just your perception. It's just all your perception. And so once you get rid of that demeanor, like once you just stop blaming everything but yourself, your life is gonna be so much better. And it's just hard work, hard work. You want something hard work. Like I didn't even get lucky overnight and just meet MC Magic. It's like, I didn't just wake up and like, oh, I can sing. And like MC Magic found out, but no, I've been singing, like I said, since I was little and I've been trying, I tried to start my own career by myself since I was 14 years old. And um so what we're here four years later so that's like a whole like high school basically that's all that of putting in work putting in work and so so definitely he did teach me that um and he does all his stuff you know he does all his production his lives did everything and so like that's the only way it's the only way and i'm saying that and i hope if one day i do become if i do become you know big this interview gets a lot of views because people need to hear that (laughs) they need to hear that this generation is so lazy i will never side with the people in my generation because they're so they're full of excuses it's all bs and i and i know like i said from experience i used to be that way and now that i obliterated that from my life my life has gone up i have almost nothing to complain about anymore of course you have bad days but i have almost nothing to complain about anymore and my life just it's like it's good it's thriving it's so good and i would not i would not want to be in any other state of mind or nothing like that so you know i I like like my dad says hard work works so (laughs) well jay rocks it was a pleasure having you on the podcast it was amazing thank you (laughs) um you know i wish you the best success i mean your your music is just amazing and i look forward to listening to your (laughs) album on february 19th Thank you. And, I'm excited. I'm so excited. <laughs> uh, same here. And uh, I want to thank you and MC Magic for making this possible. Oh, yeah. Thank you for having me. You know, And I always tell like people who interview me, like, um, you know, um, it takes a lot to want to, what is it, like, get into someone new because, like, you don't know how it's going to go or whatever. Yeah. And so just really thank you for the opportunity. Um and, you know, I, I just appreciate it. And like I said, I hope everyone hears this one day because yeah. this, this is important <laughs> important stuff right here. Oh, yeah, definitely. No, thank you. Um, and I just want to say one last thing. You either work hard or every single day of your life is going to feel like hard work. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All, right. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye.